Hey everybody, uh, in this video we're going to be talking about how to actually chase a solar eclipse. Uh, as you know, the solar eclipse uh, over the North America is going to only appear, the total part is only going to appear in a very narrow strip. So you have to be at the right place at the right time and have good weather in order to see this uh, great spectacle. Um, so we're going to give you five easy steps on how to actually attain that. Uh, and I have my friend Yezu, who's from uh, Beijing, China, and we're going to talk about her experiences of uh, chasing solar eclipses and she's been doing it since, gosh, a few, like five years now, six years. So let's talk about, uh, let's talk about the eclipses. Uh, so step one, uh, you're going to look at the eclipse prediction maps uh, for the next ones. Now I know you went to 2013's solar eclipse in Africa and that yeah. was a very narrow shadow path, right? Yeah. How accurate did you have to be to be in that spot? That, that was a very um, hard time actually because that place is very uh, far away from the uh, capital of the Kenya because we went to Kenya to to saw the uh, solar eclipse so we just rent an aircraft 12 of us wow so, so we, <laughs> we, we we took that aircraft to the uh, spot so you're telling me that a lot of these eclipses will actually happen in very remote places so they don't yeah. they it's it's not like you're going to be in a big city or anything like that. Yeah. I really want to, you know, uh, every total eclipse that happens in China, but it is impossible mm -hmm. to see. Okay. So, looking at an eclipse map is very important because you have to be at the right place in the right time. Mm -hmm. So the second step in, in terms of planning for solar eclipses is to find a spot on the path that you want to visit and that have cool places to see uh, in the surrounding areas. Uh, so this year's total solar eclipse, I will personally be going to uh, St. Anthony, Idaho. And the reason for that is it's around a few very nice national parks. Uh, Stephanie will be potentially joining me on this trip um, and I'm within 90 minutes driving distance to like Yellowstone National Park as well as the Grand Tetons and uh, Craters of the Moon uh, National Monument. Um, so this is something you want to be considering. Some, many people go to see eclipses for different reasons. Uh, some people will go because they want to be photography uh, related, like, like I am. I'm going to be trying to shoot the eclipse. Um, and some people will just go for the experience. Um, so picking that spot in that shadow is, uh, is essentially very important. Very important step is to study the climate of the area to ensure you have good weather and travelability. Online, there's many resources out there, especially at greatamericaneclipse.com. Um, my other uh, friend of mine, uh, Jeff Sims, he taught, who I featured in my documentary, he constantly looks at weather. I would remember back in 2015 solar eclipse, uh, he was really debating hard, um, even on a small island in Svalbard, which direction, whether we were going to go out east or go out south or whatnot, just so we could have best weather for the eclipse. Now, if you watch my documentary, you also understand that in 2013, and this is also quite unfortunate for yep. Stephanie as well, we got clouded out. Now, we understand climate and the predictions in terms of how much cloud cover uh, there is in a certain area, um, but the problem is on day of the eclipse, you get weather, and weather is unpredictable. You just don't know what's going to happen that day. So you have to be able to plan for that and make that a contingency. So step four, uh, it's for me as a photographer and, as, and Stephanie as well as a photographer, uh, we have to prepare much, uh, lots of gear in order to see the solar eclipse. Uh, for people who are just going to experience the eclipse, you can probably skip this step, but essentially it's, it's like planning for your trip. So what are you gonna do? Uh, I like to work uh, backwards, okay? Uh, the way I do it is I take when the eclipse day happens and then I work backwards. So a day or two before the eclipse, I'll make those my planning days. And then any days prior to that becomes like uh, my side trips or days after the eclipse become all my side trips. Like if I want to visit national monuments, if I want to fly to some, uh, you know, cool place to be, for example, in 2016 solar eclipse, uh, I planned it out to be in this island called Sulawesi. Uh, but then after that trip, I made a side trip to Bali. Now, for uh, eclipse gear planning and whatnot, it depends if you're photographing the eclipse. So obviously you're gonna have to bring a couple of equipment and gears. So let's talk about that real quick. Oh. All right. So, camera this. Okay, sure. All right, so. Big lens. Um, part of step four is preparing and planning your gear. Um, many people want to photograph this eclipse. If this is your second or third or fourth time uh, chasing the solar eclipse, then by golly, go and try to shoot it and make this your challenge. 
Um, but if it's your first time, I really think it's probably best you don't and just enjoy the eclipse. That's just me personally, because it's such a great experience and you only have a few minutes to see it. Um, that being said though, I say something, but I'm gonna do the other, I'm a hypocrite. So I have here uh, my Canon 5D and I have um, two lenses, two lens sets that I usually will shoot the Eclipse with. And everybody will usually shoot these pictures. You get the close-up picture, uh, HDR with the nice uh, Corona. And uh, the way I shoot it is I have this nice uh, Tamron 150 to 600 millimeter lens. It's a huge, huge lens. Hold on to that. Yeah. Um, and then I have my wide field uh, pictures, which I take with this 16 to 35 millimeter lens. Very, very good glass, uh, awesome stuff. Um, so I pack this all in my bags along with my tripods. Um, but as you saw from my movie uh, in Chasing Shadows, Jeff brought like 22 different cameras uh, at some point for the North Pole, and you just have to plan for that. Um, he brought uh, for 360 cameras, he had six GoPros, he had uh, his wide field, not only for photography, but he was also doing video and time lapse as well. Um, so there's, there's tons of elements that you can shoot of the Eclipse, and the unfortunate thing is no one picture will ever reproduce what your eyes can see and what you experience during the Eclipse. Uh, you can only try to get a best estimate for that. So when, when the eclipse happens, uh, remember you have to be at the right place at the right time. So this year all you have to do is just drive into the eclipse path and wait for the eclipse to happen. If you're just there to watch the eclipse, then great. You just have your safe solar eclipse glasses, you look at the eclipse uh, during the partial phase and when total hits, boom, you get to witness the eye of God. It's an incredible experience. Um, so there's another contingency, remember step three is watch for that weather. So if the weather starts to come up, creep up on you, and I'll do another video on this about weather. When the weather starts to creep up on you, it's just, you gotta move. So you gotta pack up your things and quickly go east or west on the path and see which spot, you know, driving a few hundred miles left and right to see where, where you can get clear skies for weather. Um, so, um, that's how you chase the solar eclipse, guys. Uh, stay tuned in the next video. I'll be talking more about other eclipse things.